Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Civil War Regiments podcast. Um, I, I say this every episode, but um, I'm always excited about every episode. And this one um, has been uh, something I've been looking forward to for a little while. And this episode, uh, we're talking about a new research website called Research Arsenal, researcharsenal.com. And um, it's a new revolutionary uh, website uh, for ease of research and documents, uh, ordinance reports, letters, photographs from the war. It's really uh, an amazing, amazing thing. I signed up for it. So should you. And uh, my guest today is Stephen Dacus. Um, and he is one of the brainchilds behind this, if not the, the lead. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, talking to him about how this all began and how it's used and um, and how it's going to help us uh, with our research. So, Stephen, welcome to the show. No, appreciate you having me on. Uh, like I said, been uh, been. I think we haven't really hooked up officially. Uh, we're kind of in passing, uh, seeing see each other. But uh, no, it's good to finally uh, be on there. Yeah, awesome. And uh, I, I had to once I heard that uh, um, this was a thing like i had no idea until i was yeah. i just saw on facebook all these advertisements for research arsenal and i was right. like what the heck is this <laughs> I, was like, I started checking it out and i was like this is like something i i've always wanted kind of thing and exactly. and i think uh you found point. yeah you yeah. you've seen that you've seen all the feedback you guys have gotten a lot of feedback over these last few weeks because uh, oh, yeah. when did it launch how long has it been since the launch yeah, so we actually, officially, we launched uh, right before Gettysburg 150th. I want to say, actually, it was June 15th, right around Oh, wow. There. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So we, we've been yeah. on for basically two months now. Um, okay. So we, we have like one full month of data, and then we're, you know, getting the second full month of data. So it's, uh, it's, it's you know, it's progressing, definitely yeah. learning. But yeah. uh, going going live is, is always nerve-wracking on both ends so it's 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 good it, it's out there it's good we're getting good feedback and it's, more importantly uh we're getting a lot of people who are using it and actually like actually doing a lot of good work with it so yeah awesome awesome so yeah i'm excited to hear all about it yeah but, uh, awesome. but you know before we uh go too far um i always kind of like to begin uh most of my interviews with just a little bit about yourself and how how, where, when, and why did you find your interest in, in Civil War history? Where did that all begin for you, sir? <laughs> What's funny is, is listening to you know other podcasts or other people on YouTube you know say what drew them in, especially our generation or my age. Uh, we you know we always go to the movie Gettysburg. However, <laughs> uh, that wasn't what it was was it for me. Ironically, it was a movie, but it wasn't the movie Gettysburg. It was uh, the movie Dances with Wolves. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you've seen that movie, the very, you know, the opening scene there is a civil war based battle. And, uh, so I, I, before it came out, I was, as a kid, I was always interested in pl playing army and had all the toy guns and everything. And, and, uh, just very interested on the military side of things, uh, but more on the modern side. And then that movie dances with the wolves comes out. And uh, I was, I mean, I was old enough to, you know, I could remember, I could understand things. I, I don't know. Uh, I think, when did it come out? Like 90, 91, something like that? Yeah, uh, yeah. And I remember the opening scene, you know, there was a Civil War battle with, you know, tactics and, and weapons and uniforms I've never seen before. And I asked my dad, I'm like, that is cool. What war is that? Uh, and my dad <laughs> was like, well, it's, that's, that's the American Civil War. And, and uh, from, I mean, from that point on, you know, that, that got me, ironically... Not at all interested on on the Indian Wars at all. I went straight to the Civil War, and uh, just was one of those geeks and nerds straight in. You know, as a kid, uh, all the way through elementary school, through junior high and high school, loved the Civil War. Uh, every Christmas was books and other things <laughs> of, of Civil War, and and uh, like that. That's what that that was the genesis for me. And I always wanted to reenact, uh, be a reenactor. I never did up until I was a well past adulthood uh, or well into adulthood i should say and uh so all growing up never did reenacting always wanted to but never never did and honestly until right at the 150th cycle so yeah wow you know um I i'm kind of in that same boat I i've been since childhood a civil war buff but i didn't get into reenacting until i was right. in my 20s and you know exactly. so it's like uh 
some of us are latecomers to the party, but then we make right. up for it. We we sure do. <laughs> exactly. But that that's good. I like that. You're right. I, sometimes I feel like uh, a lot of origin stories, especially on my show and other shows I listen to, are all very similar. But that's mm-hmm. the first Dances with Wolves shout out that I've got. So that's uh, well, that's there you interesting. go. And uh, yeah. and I I've come to think of it, I'm trying to. I was like, was that battle at the beginning supposed to be, was that just a made up battle? Or part of me remembers that it was supposed to be Antietam or something. No, it was, it was supposed to be, if I remember right in the, cause I was, I, I watched yeah. like that movie a million times and watched them making yeah. up. If I remember right, and I'm sure, you know, listeners will call me out <laughs> on it, but the, I think it's supposed to be a Western battle or, or at least based on a, a Western theme battle. Uh, I, c- I could be wrong though. Uh, I mean, and I'll say this as a side note too. You know, we all, especially as historians, or what I, I call myself like a hobby historian, like, I mean, we all rag on these movies because they're, they're, I mean, they're so bad. But at the same time, look at how many people have been drawn into history because of them. So obviously, and again, this has been, you know, talked at nauseum about movies and the, the value of them. But I just think it, it's worth saying, like, yeah, we can make fun of them. But at the same time, they also bring people into history. So. That's right. That's right. I, I yeah. feel the same way. And a lot of those movies, uh, man, uh, we have to be thankful for the 90s for giving You're us a right? lot of historical epics. So, exactly. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, and and this is a, um, a little bit of a good segue into my next question, kind of about, so, yeah, more or less, you know, I find many, you know, history buffs and historians, we all come into the hobby at different points, different levels, right? You know, with our knowledge base, you know, some of us come with a knack for research right out of the gate, you know, some of us go on a longer journey. I went on a longer journey of discovery, and it took me a while before I started reading into things and getting, not learning everything from movies, you know, starting to read books, starting to research, and constantly you know uh learning and finding new and better resources as you go but when did you uh find that interest in in getting a deeper research and um also you know where and how uh did that ovc the 11th ovc library come about and all that so multifaceted question here uh and yeah. multi multifaceted answer so really, where where the interest went into the the deep dive of history and really what the research arsenal is now of of really primary records of showing you exactly the document where people get this you know myth or whatever or where that grain of or that tr- you know ner- kernel of, of truth came from uh, where that started was honestly my journey of, of becoming a reenactor and uh, so I didn't get into reenacting until my late twenties. And, you know, I was honestly, I, I'm one of those type of guys that I want to do things right. I don't want to be the weakest link. Uh, I mean, the jobs that I've had in my career, I've been in, in emergency response, uh, emergency medicine. I've been a firefighter, both wildland and structure uh, and been part of teams that, I mean, it's, you're, it's great and grand in you. You don't want to be the weakest link. Never be the weakest link. And so for reenacting, you know, at the time it was uh, the big forums, the authentic campaigner, and at the time the the Civil War reenactors forum, the two you know mainstream and authentics. Uh, and I would you know research like when 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 I wanted to get into reenacting, ironically it was just like I said during the 150th cycle, to where it was supposed to just be a one-time thing. 150th Gettysburg was coming up. I wanted to reenact, and I said, hey, I'll just do the 150th Gettysburg, get my giggles up, you know, and and call it good, you know, and. Um, I, you know, mentioned uh, I, I had horses. I, I've had horses my whole life. I've been a horseman my whole life for the most part. And uh, I said, hey, I'll do cavalry. You know, it's, it, I, I like to ride. I'll do cavalry. And uh, I started researching and I'm like, oh, man, there's there's more to this than I thought. Like and we, especially on the authentic campaigner forum, for those of you guys who were in the forum, not the Facebook, but the forums like ew, they would put the fear of God in you of like. <laughs> Of don't ask a question. Don't ask a question. You bet, but you better Google everything you can. You better search the search engine. You before you even ask a question, you better show that you did your effort. And and so for ironically for two years, okay. So so you know the 150th Manassas is when I kind of started, and I'm talking Gettysburg, right? So that's two years of research. I didn't post anything. I would just be a uh, you know behind the scenes. I would I read every single article related to cavalry I could find, and uh, got to figure out okay here's the shell jacket I need. Here's this. Here's that. 
Uh, and then I went to my first reenactment, which was actually one before Gettysburg, uh, to get my feet wet, per se. And uh, I got a guy who actually, this is the genesis of the 11th OVC. This is the genesis of the research arsenal. This guy, I don't even know who this guy is, but he came to me and said, that's the wrong canteen. You're inauthentic. You're a farm. And I'm like, oh man, like, and here, I mean, my deal was, I mean, like, I didn't want to, like, I, if, if I knew better, I would do better. I just didn't know better. Uh, and I'm the type of guy that's like, show me, show me where to look. I'll read, I'll do it. I just didn't know where to look, right? And so that just that stuck with me. If I have the wrong canteen, and he said it with such confidence that my my initial thought was like, how in the world do you have the confidence to not only be like, hey, I think that might be? No, he's like, nope, that's wrong. And I'm like, how do you how do you, how do you know? And you know, out of everything I've been researching, how do you have that much confidence to know? Because even at that time, I knew you had different depots issuing different things and different contractors. And I remember thinking, how are you that confident to know not just which contractor it was, but which arsenal it came from or what depot? And like, I like show me your magic because I want to know this. And of course, I asked him, and he had no idea, or he he couldn't tell me where he got the information. And so this is where the multifaceted thing starts is I, I didn't want to be this weakest link and I'm willing to do the work. Combine that with my uh, my religious background. So I, I, I grew up in the religious, you know, very strong religious background, still uh, what, I, what I would consider a, a strong Christian or trying to be. I, I suck at being a human being, but I'm, I try. I try. Um, we all and, do. and I've been raised with everything you do in religion, you, you have to have proof. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Why do we do this? So growing up in Bible class, Sunday, you know, Sunday school, we would have to actually argue our points with book, chapter, and verse on why we do certain things. So like that's that's already in my head is why why do we do communion? Show me the book, chapter, and verse that we why? Why do we do that? Okay. And combine that background in my head with the the historical background. I don't want to read a book uh, necessarily uh, about where it came from. I want to see the primary documents. Show me where the book got it, right? So not a tertiary or secondary or quaternary source. Show me the primary source that uh, that sh- like where we're getting this information. And then that's what introduced me into the National Archives, State Archives, uh, online. Uh, at the time, nothing was online. Um, you know, obviously that's changed since now, but it was very difficult. Uh, and we were doing good just to get, you know, the Columbia Rifles Research Compendium. Uh, you know, those of you who have that, you know, I, think, I wonder, I haven't seen one for sale in a long time. I wonder how much it would go for sale now because some things have changed since then. Some things have been disproven. Not a lot, but a few things have. Uh, but uh, it'd be interesting uh, how, how how much that would go for now because, I mean, people are paying like $300 for, uh, you know, Columbia Rifles Research Compendium book. But uh, so that's where my interest in deep diving went is, okay. this guy basically berated me for the wrong canteen. I want to do right. Show me where it is. I don't want, you know, a tertiary source. Show me the primary source. And so I started going into obviously at the time there's only books available. And so I would look for books that had the um, bibliography or the, the citation. And then I would look for the citation at that state archives or national archives. Uh, and so that was where my deep dive of, of research started or the, the genesis thereof. Yeah. And <laughs> so that was a know, lot, but uh, no, 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 that's yeah. great. And um, I like it. And, you know, and a, a couple of things I take away from that is a um, couple of points to hit on is, is, yeah, you have to be in the right mindset. You have to be willing to improve. And I think, uh, there's a couple of things to consider here where, you know, yeah, you have to have that attitude that, hey, I want to improve my impression. I'm willing to listen. Like, yeah, please tell me I, I want to learn more. You know, like, don't be the guy that just tells me I'm a farm and walk away. Like, give me give me a little give me give me something. Exactly. And I think uh, from both sides of, of the hobbies here, you know, sometimes it gets really divisive. Of course, we all know yeah. that. But like it has to come both ways. The new guy has to be willing to listen and, and try to research and learn more. But then the old veterans also need to be willing to show those guys the right uh, path into this. Like, you know, cause please, like not everybody, like I mentioned earlier, not everybody has that knack for research right away. And we kind of have to learn that. And, 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 and you, you know, you kind of uh, 
uh, I find a lot of similarities, <laughs> but like when you hit on too, just, um, how you were, you know, uh, researching within the church, you know, you already had that knack, um, in you. And I, I always had that where I was always just keeping up with information, even as a kid. And so right. once I got the understanding of research, it came natural in a sense, because I was already, I already had the brain for it and not everybody has the yeah, patience, the you know? But all, all research kind of ends up being the same because it's yeah. data is data. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good point. But it comes natural to some and, and a little harder for others. And, right. and I've had people come up to me over the years like, hey, can you research something for me? Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, so, and that's another thing too. And, and that's and that's more or less what's leading to uh, our uh, discussion today when it inevitably becomes research arsenal. Exactly. But, you know, um, and honestly, another good segue that, there are many who are overwhelmed by research. In fact, that yeah, if you are the new guy showing up at a reenactment and everyone is saying, hey, your canteen's wrong, hey, your hat's wrong, hey, this is wrong, that could be overwhelming. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, everything that I thought was right is wrong, and where do I begin? And some guys turn away. Like, uh, like we could say the same in religion, but there's some guys who, when they get to that confusing point, instead of digging deeper, they're like, you know what? It's easier for me to just back out of this. Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah, or like some guys, if they get told their canteen's wrong, you know what? Hey, screw you. I'm out of this. You know, like <laughs> I'm quitting this hobby. <laughs> but, you know, and, and so it's overwhelming. It is. But, you know, uh, so and to, to visit archives is overwhelming. Uh, you so, know, that I, takes time. That takes time, easy. travel exactly. and, and money. And then the old way, you know, now we talk about a lot of, is online now, but the old way to request these documents, go into these archives, it's intimidating, you know, yeah. for people, for newcomers. And it's a very time consuming, uh, but very necessary detail in researching the war. Yeah. But, exactly. you know, um, but where and when, you know, as we progress this conversation, you know, like, so what finally was the tipping point to really get that research arsenal, you know, really available for people. And then in, in your own, again, uh, I mean, more or less, uh, I'm going to, I'm a kid, but like, uh, uh, you're considered almost a, a savior right now of, of research for people. And <laughs> no, no, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, like just the work you've done has really blown away a lot of people right now. And it's almost just like me, we're all saying the same thing. This is something that we always wanted. And I know that that was probably, you probably took that into account as you're doing this, like, Hey, let's make this, let's format this site the way I know I want it, but the way my parts would want it to another history buzz. Well, I mean, to answer that question, uh, I was, I was actually driving for my work. I do a lot of driving and I was driving and I, I remember being kind of frustrated on like multiple different angles. Number one, uh, we were doing research on uh, actually the, the common myth that Spencer rifles or Spencer carbines were at Gettysburg, uh, especially on, on the Buford side of things. Uh, and of course, I'm, I'm focusing on cavalry right now, but um, and, uh, you know, so there's there's, you know, there's books, there's I mean, again, secondary and tertiary sources that say yes. And in fact, there are some that say, yes, they were. There's others that say, no, they're not. So which secondary book is true? Right. And uh, and so I remember being like. Man, there. I know that because I hear the archives has this list of all the quarterly ordnance returns from from the federal army from the whole war, which actually that ends up being false. It's not from the whole war, but close enough that. Uh, and I, I hear people, especially on the authentic campaigner forum, you know, I, I had multiple people like snipe back with like, it's on the, you know, just look at the ordnance returns. It's on the ordnance returns. And I remember thinking, oh, okay, well, show me where they are. I'll look at them. And uh, they're like, oh, they're at the National Archives, where I'm like, I'm not going to go to Washington, D.C. when I live in the Rocky Mountains. Like, I'm sorry, dude. Um, I'm, that's not going to be a thing. And uh, and I was like, well, I can order microfilm rolls myself and have them shipped. And I look on, on the, the NARA, or the National Archives website, and they're like $110 a roll or whatever. And there's eight rolls. I mean, that's like $1,000 I would have to spend uh, to do this because I didn't really know which roll I needed. And I'm like, this is stupid. And, and I guarantee you, like, <laughs> I am not the only person that wants access to this, right? And so that was like, you know, seed number one that got in my head. And then seed number two 
was the idea of photographs. I know if you're for reenactors, a lot of us probably have some random folder on our computer of images we save and tag with a description of, you know, like, you know, hair uh, hairstyles or like a whole folder of different weapons or a whole folder of how to stand, you know, or whatever. Or oh, I had a whole folder of pinky rings. How many people are wearing pinky rings? And... Um, and I remember thinking, like, I, I couldn't find an image that I knew I saved. Like, I know, like, two years ago, I saved an image. I know I did. I could not find it because in my folder, there was, like, a thousand images, and I couldn't find it. Same thing with the National Art, or sorry, the Library of Congress. Really good, awesome source for photos. But again, all you can really search is what they title it and maybe a small description underneath. And I remember thinking, I know there was a specific there's a specific image I was looking for with uh, a trooper with his hat turned up, uh, unbuttoned blouse, and his pants tucked over his blouse. Like, I, I want to find that image. And I, I, I couldn't. Like, I, I still to this day, I can't, I can't find it. Um, it disappeared. But, uh, and so, so that kind of combined to say, this is stupid. Like, there, there has to be a website, a database that I'm just unaware of that has all this stuff in there. And sure enough, I, I searched and searched and searched. There's nothing. Uh, I mean, the closest you get for photographs is Library of Congress. The closest you get for any other document is Fold3 and Ancestry.com. Uh, and they're focused on the people. Like, like, they tag the people very well. But anything else, like weapons or accoutrements or the transcription of the actual document, like, it's it's hard. You can't really search it. And you can't search by unit. you got to search by name. And uh, I'm like, well, th this is stupid. And so really what I decided is, I mean, I'm kind of a, an entrepreneur. Those that know me, uh, I just, I think I have a hobby of starting businesses. Uh, so I, uh, I'm, I, well, I put too a, many irons in the fire. That's what and I And that's do. a fulfilling thing too. When, <laughs> when you have an idea and you see that yeah. such a platform doesn't exist. Yeah. And that's always like, that's always a cool Oh, a gold mine oh, yeah. moment where you're like, oh my gosh, it doesn't exist. I could, <laughs> I could dive into this. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so actually the, the research arsenal started as, as actually our own internal database for our own group to research. Because uh, like those of you who know, I'm part of the 11th OBC and we have our YouTube channel that you know, focuses on, on civil war material culture specifically for the cavalry. And, um, and so, you know, we do, we, I needed research to do those videos. And so for, you know, I basically I, uh, you know, doing research, doing these videos, and I started uh, trying to find a software that would, would do what I wanted. And again, looking at all the software out there for like people like museums use for their archives or for filing their, their artifacts or whatever. Uh, I, and there was not a single database that I could purchase or acquire or subscribe to that did what I wanted to do, like nothing out there. And so uh, I was like, well, I'm, I'm just going to program our own website. And uh, I actually got quotes from about five different programming companies. Um, four of them said, no, thanks. That's way too complicated. Uh, no, like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And I'm like, crap. Um, and then the, the one company that did, they're like, this is a cool project. Uh, we, we see value in it. And to give them credit, they actually gave us a significant discount for the first year and a half uh, of programming um, that uh, they be they believed in what we were or what we were trying to do. And so uh, we basically, from the ground up, created a uh, a database that we could upload to and tag photos, documents, letters, diaries, anything uh, with keywords, with locations, dates. I mean, anything that you would want to search by filtering. Again, image, images or letters or diaries or any document, filter by date, filter by regiment, filter by core, filter by uh, items in the image, right? And so we created this out of, uh, yeah, you're going to show, uh, show the database and, and it basically created this software to, to do this. Now, if I would have known now uh, how much this would have cost, I would have never done this, no, like not at all. Uh, if they would have gave me the quote for what I currently uh, have into it, um, I would have said, yeah, you're crazy. Uh, I'll just keep my, you know, Microsoft Word folders. Uh, but it just kept progressing and kept progressing and kept progressing. 
uh, that we have what we have today. Uh, and so, yeah, what you're showing now is, is kind of the, what we currently have. Uh, to where actually, if you go back to the uh, the, the archives itself, I don't know if you can go back up to the top and log in again. Um, there you go. So like this this main menu, this is what we call our our uh, our, li our library screen, and we have it divided into each major document. So if you want to just search photos, basically up on the top, that first row on the top is our core of our of our group. Uh, the other aspects of the library, there's still not a whole lot of documents in there. Uh, like for sure. instance, morning reports. Uh, I love the concept of morning reports. We only have a few thousand, so representative-wise, basically nothing. Uh, but images, uh, images. We have uh, pretty much most of the Library of Congress images. Well, they they keep uploading more. So I'm going to say we have about uh, about half uh, of the Library of Congress images that are now keyword searchable. Uh, and actually, yeah, if you want to click on that image right there, uh, you can see. So this image is, uh, oh, actually, there we go. Click, click on any, any one of those images. So actually, this is a really good image right here. So um, if you take a look, is right now, this is what we call a field image. Uh, it's not in a portrait. It's, it's not a portrait. It's not in a studio. And we actually, you can filter by field images or portraits. And so if you know, like, I don't care about portraits. I don't care about studios. You can just click one toggle switch and just boom. Now all you're looking at is field images. Uh, and then again, if you want to say see field images with canteens, then, then you can you know filter by field images, then filter by canteen. And then of course you're, you're zooming in now and you can see uh, you know somewhere in here is a canteen. Uh, and actually, if I, if I remember right, I remember this image. If I remember right, one of the dudes in this image has his hat on backwards. Um, and of course you can see suspenders. Uh, there's a dude who has his, uh, um, you know, blouse tucked into his pants. There, of course, you can see cartridge boxes. Um, you have dudes in different positions. You have dudes. And this is a, this is an African American unit too, right? Yeah, if I remember. Yeah, wow. I think it is. And so, yeah. actually, if you back out of the zoom feature, you can see on the right hand side, on the left hand side of, the, of what we call the single image view. Um, actually, just, yeah, X out of that. So the left hand side, you have your image. On the right hand side, sure. you have all your data. So you have the location. If we know the location and state, we put that in there. But what you'll see in, in words um, that are in those gray black circles or ovals are the key words. And so you can see from forge crap, from forge cap oh, to cartridge gosh. box to slings to to uh, you know African American soldiers to a bomb proof everything major in that image we have tagged. I mean, so we have literally we have dudes. Who like, late at night when they can't sleep, uh, they would look at an image, they'd zoom in on everything in the image, and they would tag everything. I mean, literally from sticks. And you'll notice on, on a lot of these Library of Congress images, once you zoom in, there's things that you'll never see. Like you can see uh, fuses for artillery uh, or uh, lanyards that you would never have seen otherwise. And uh, so you may search a keyword for like lanyard or fuse or whatever, or, or say canteen. And you look at the image and you're like, where in the world is a canteen in this image? And you actually you gotta you gotta zoom in and uh, it's somewhere in the background, you know. So like you have canteen searched on here, uh, and you can see the dude riding, uh, right? Is he riding some? Oh, the guy in the far right standing. So the guy yeah. in the far right standing, facing to the right, he has a canteen. Yeah. On his hip. It's got a W on there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you, you so you can easily like if you're searching Philadelphia canteens, uh, you can just God. type in you know PA canteen or, or corrugated canteen or whatever. Or I think we have uh, bullseye canteen um, that were that that, are, that they're tagged right. Um, so oh. it, it was, the whole idea is of, of this of these images is you can keyword search what you want. Now when you do this, this is one thing that I found interesting out of thousands and thousands of images when you get down to the really the ones you want like i want to find a dude in the field with a bullseye canteen when you start doing that you realize out of thousands of images there's like two <laughs> or like, like five yeah. or whatever it is uh there's not a whole lot and uh or like certain like us carbines like a hall carbine or a, a sharps or a spencer or a you know, a Maynard or whatever carbine, you realize there's not a whole lot of images that have those specific carbines in there. And it's a way that you can really filter down really quick. And again, what what our, our database 
our our mission statement is basically to give primary records to the hobby historian or our primary records to people who don't have the time or the money or the resources to to go to all these archives and, and do their own research, right? Uh, and this gives easy, just really easy research for people who want to people who want to do it right, right? And not yeah. only for the reenactor, but also for the the, the genealogist who because we get emails, we probably get one email a day. Uh, at least multiple a week of, you know, hey, my ancestor was in the whatever, you know, Pennsylvania infantry. What weapon did he have? Because I want to buy one and hang it on my wall. And now you can do that yourself. You can go to the ordinance returns uh, and, and figure out what they had, you know. And so, uh, you, know, you know, for instance, actually, if you want to do this, uh, go to ordinance returns. Uh, and there, there's a lot of really interesting things. Uh, so we have, we'll kind of go through this. Look up in, in 1862 – Look up the first Minnesota infantry. Uh, and those of you who follow us or follow our Facebook page, you, you know probably wouldn't know where I'm going here. Uh, so yeah, 1862, and then filter by unit. Uh, so oh, I will say under when you filter by unit, if you don't have to put an army or a corps, don't do that uh, okay. because um, there again we only tag as it's listed on the document. So there's times that if there's not a core or if there's kind of confusion on what core they were in during the document, we leave it blank. And so if you know you want a you know, Missouri Infantry Regiment that was bounced around a different core, leave it blank and just type in that Missouri Infantry, right? That way you'll, you'll get everything. Uh, anyways, so click on that top one, if you will, and then zoom in on the upper left-hand photo or zoom in on the upper left-hand side of this. You'll notice that the the first Minnesota, where am I here? Minnesota, the first. Oh, actually, I think I got the first Minnesota battery. Uh, you you might have it. still filtered by yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> by uh, okay, so let, let X out of that. Maybe go to the next image. Sure. Let's see. Good. This is good practice, everyone. It is. It's really good practice. Yeah. Right? This is fascinating, Stephen. This is. Uh, go down okay, to new, uh, roll four. Yeah, go to roll four there. Yeah, at the bottom. Yep. So actually, before you zoom in, I'm oh, sorry, uh -huh. you're uh, that you're good. So uh, go zoom into the upper left hand um, side there. Okay. So what you'll see in the in these ordinance returns, and this is how all these quarterly ordinance returns are laid out. They have each company in, as a single line. So you can see Company A all the way through Company uh, L, I think sometimes M, and at the very bottom you have just like generic, you know, Company. Extra stuff uh, on a separate line, and you'll notice that the uh, company uh, was it L K, K L, yeah, oh, I maybe? yeah, like I think K, so. L, I think that's maybe the bottom uh, one right there. L. I can't quite see it, but company L yeah. had thirty, not Springfields, thirty sharps carbines. You can see that yeah. if you go scroll over and go up to the top there, you'll see that company that an entire company had sharps. Uh, sorry, not carbines, wow. sharps rifles. Yeah, uh, for yeah. for the regiment, you know, wow. and it's it's just it, these it's these nuances or these weird things that later on in the war they don't they don't have that anymore. You'll you'll notice I think by Gettysburg, I mean I could be wrong, but I think by Gettysburg they all had Springfields, right? Like, and so this is early in 1862, or I said I think late in 1862, where you had a whole company of just sharps, you know, rifles, and this is one of those details of history that are you know the really a, kind of a neat. A neat thing, and especially for the reenacting side of things, it's cool that if we want to do an 1862 impression of the first Minnesota, hey, maybe we have some sharps in there instead of uh, some Springfields, right? So yeah. uh, it just it just allows yeah. more flexibility and more flexibility, but also more specificity uh, on the reenacting side of things and more of a gee whiz thing on the genealogy side so, of things. So, so again, something like this. This roll four here, before a website such as this existed, I would have had to go to DC to look at this, basically. Yeah, yeah basically <laughs> go to DC and yeah. and ask for their microfilm and then search through like yeah, I think there's thirty nine hundred or thirty eight hundred images. Yeah. And then you'd have to zoom in and figure out like, is that Minnesota? Oh no, that's Michigan. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, and Wait. then you can keep yeah. scrolling. And then here. We did the work for you. Like, actually, I'm the one who tagged these ordinance returns. It was late at night. I'm zooming in. Like, what regiment is that? I don't know. Um, oh, that's fun, though. That's gotta, <laughs> it's, it's it's tiresome, but that is yeah. so fun. Uh, yeah. But like, so if you will, uh, you know, we dived into a couple of categories here. So what else? Um, 
do we have here then? What else can we access on this yeah, site? Yeah, so I'll go over the, what we call our three core offers, right? So we have three things that really set us apart right now. Every So three of these buttons are, are good. The rest of them honestly don't have enough data in there to really be useful. Um, so for instance, the first one we already looked at is the images. We have most library of, con or not say most, I keep uploading. So about half of the Library of Congress images, we used to have every one of them back in the day when we started this, but they've uploaded them. But we have you know, 10,000 or more um, images that are keyword searchable and tagged. Uh, and then we have letters and diaries. We have uh, officially about 30,000 letters and diaries. Uh, you'll notice when you kind of search all, it only shows 11,700 right now. Uh, but yeah. half of those, uh, we, we, what we call, we combine them or bind them into groupings. Uh, and so, so they don't, so really when we combine them or group them together into like, you know, big collections, like, you know, one guy who writes, you know, a hundred diaries over the course of the year, or, you know, kind of combine them together. So that's why, you know, I say 30,000, but it only shows 11,000 on, that's kind of why, but we, we have hundreds of thousands of pages of letters that you can zoom in, you can see the original letter, but more importantly on the right hand side that you can be yeah. scrolling right now, you can keyword search any word in that letter. Uh, and so like for those of you who were at Blakely, not this year, but la uh, last time, so about three years ago, when it just downpoured and rained, I remember laying there being miserable, um, thinking <laughs> people have had to write <laughs> about being miserable in the rain, and I wanted to do a YouTube video about, you know, what they say about rain. And, um, of course, Will Eichler beat me to it. He had a, an episode on rain after that. We, apparently, we think alike. But you can keyword search in, in these letters. You can keyword search rain and, and see what soldiers wrote about it. Or if you're specifically interested on how, say, artillery protected their guns in the rain, you can search rain and then under units filter by wow. uh, artillery, right? Uh, and then you get every letter written by artillery that talked about rain. And um, so, yeah, and when you when you filter by unit, you don't have to put, you know, the third Pennsylvania artillery. You can just put artillery and then it just filters all artillery. You don't have to put a specific unit in there. Um, so right, yeah, right now we have yeah. 20, what is that, 26 letters that have uh, artillery in them and the word rain. And, and look at this. So here's one. Um from a Union Artillery man, and his first sentence in the letter is, I take my pen in the hand to write a few lines. It rains today, a slow, yeah. dull rain, yeah. and I have not hung my clothes out. Does the <laughs> rain ever hinder you down there, washing day? But uh, that's yeah. a remarkable, that's remarkable that I could just go in here, and I applaud you guys for taking the time uh, to do that and, and pull here, whether it's an image or a letter, that's fascinating to me. And <laughs> Yeah, we appreciate that. To uh, Griff with Spared and Shared. Uh, those of you who, who know of Griff and his work, uh, I want to say 90-ish percent of our letters and diaries are from his Spared and Shared series. Uh, in fact, I did a lot of research on his his pages. My problem with it, and actually I, I asked for permission to, to upload his letters because I said, hey, you have like 30 pages that I got to search independently, and, and I, I'm not going to do that 30 times. And so he's like, yeah, totally, because he, he doesn't want any of his, of his work lost either. And uh, so I, I got to give a shout out to him for a, he could. I mean, he could totally have been like, no, you can't copy my stuff at all. But he mm -hmm. totally understood what we were doing and the value of it. Uh, and now we have, you know, hundreds of thousands of pages that you can keyword search and uh, call it good. Oh, I will say this. Um, each image that you see right here on the gallery screen uh, is a whole letter with multiple pages. So if you actually click on one of these letters, uh, if you actually scroll down just a little bit, there you go, actually, you don't have to scroll down. Uh, right on the bottom of the letter, you can see the different pages uh, of the letter. So you can, it's kind of like when you shop for clothing and there's a there's a button on the bottom, you can see the front or the back. Uh, yeah, it's kind of yeah, the same just thing. Like it's just click on the image below to, to get the next page and the next page and the next page. Okay? And I love the fact that you have like transcripts here too yeah. that you have because that's amazing because uh, sometimes that, that saves people trouble too or they could just go and look at the transcript yeah. instead of the painstaking, you know, letter. Like oh, for yeah. me, I still have fun reading the original letter, oh, but like sure. it's great to have that option.
Exactly. Oh, man, my uh, my problem with that in researching is, yeah, it's really cool to, to read the original handwriting, but when I'm, you say, at a time, you know, time deadline for research or time deadline to do a video or time deadline for whatever, like, I don't have time to read this chicken scratch, um, you know, letters that these guys wrote. Um, and so I just, I just want, you know, something text readable that I can keyword search, you know, do control F or whatever and keyword search. And that's what this database allows us to do. Wow. Uh, this is remarkable. And again, I, I can't <laughs> wait to, to kind of implement my own searches here. Right. And so, so, so you have that we've looked at the photographs, we looked at letters and we did, uh, ordinance returns. Ordinance. And so if we so, could briefly kind of summarize what else ones? you have here. Yeah. yeah. So the next one on the upper right, uh, those are quarter quartermaster specifications. This is out of all of them. This is one that is the most unique. Um, those of you who are familiar with the 1865 quartermaster's manual or even like the 1862 ordinance manual, uh, it actually, if you want to click on drum, click on drum. Uh, what this is, is if, if you actually scroll down, it actually lists in from the 1865 quartermaster's manual, uh, the actual specifications they gave to contractors on how it was to be built, designed, cut, and inspected, wow. right? And so, like you'll see here, drums are to be made with seasoned ash wood, you know, 13 and a half inches wide or high or, you know, whatever, right? And then, so that text is the specifications they would give to contractors. And then above that, you'll see all of the images in the database that have been tagged with that keyword. <laughs> Uh, and so if you wow. just want to, if you're wanting to do research on drums or drumsticks or uh, bridles for artillery horses or whatever it is, uh, then you can, you can do that, right? And so you can see every image with, you know, drums and so you can see drums and of course drumsticks are tagged in this photo as well. And of course, then you can mm -hmm. see mu musicians with a musician's jacket or frock uh, tagged on that image as well. And then of course, then you can go the rabbit hole of research. And then click on frock coats with musician stripes, and man, and, and then you just go forever. That that's um, that's incredible, Steve. <laughs> that's I, so, I'm blown away by that one too. Like I love having so much in one place. Like exactly. That, so that's I mean, and this is not only is this great to have these specifications for reenactors who are trying to recreate stuff, but like to have that shortcut. You have the description there. You have the documents, and then the pictures all tagged. Um, that's incredible. Right. Exactly. So uh, if you want to go back to the main uh, gallery screen there in the library, um, so then, so that's ordinance, or sorry, quartermaster. Oh, I will say this on the quartermaster and ordinance specifications, it is specifically from the federal 1865 quartermaster's manual, the 1862 ordinance manual, and the 18... So oh, those are the two big ones. I'll leave it there. Those are the two big ones. So you, you will see some discrepancies uh, in, in the earlier and later manuals. So, but at least it gives a starting point of what there should be. be sure, like. sure. Uh, so moving on, uh, we have general and special orders. Uh, we have about, if you want to click on that one, I think we have like 3,000. Uh, oh, no. Wow. No, only 1,300. So, so 1,300 uh, orders and which actually there's a, a decent, you know, amount of orders that come from the Army of the Potomac, the, the the Gulf area, the Western Theater as well. And so if you want to know, actually, there's some f pretty funny orders of, you know, don't run horses and don't run over. Uh, like there's one order of like asking artillerymen not to run over infantrymen. Like just wow. don't run them over. Avoid them, uh, which is kind of <laughs> hilarious because, you know, there's a story behind that somewhere. Uh, wow. And so if you want to, you know, search again, these are all keyword searchable. If you want to search orders for a specific unit or a word or like execution, you know, like Man. where executions, you know, talked about in these orders, uh, maybe they were, I don't know. Um, and so <laughs> wow. you, you, know, you can search, you know, more than a thousand orders uh, from both Army of the Potomac, Army of Tennessee, the Gulf, you know, all those regions. Um, and then move on to morning reports. Again, we're getting into uh, areas where we only have a few hundred or a few thousand of these. Um, so did you click on clothing? It looks like a clothing ledger. Um, this was no, the... Uh, which okay, one? so yeah, this morning, is reports. morning reports. Yeah. And, uh, and this is really where we set ourselves apart, our, our, our goal of not, not competing with Ancestry or Fold3, but complementing them because Fold3 and Ancestry focus on the people we focus on what we call the rest of the story or the, the more detailed story. And so for instance, they would never, you know, 
upload or scan morning reports because all you'd have to i think you have to go to like image like 22 or something like that on this one yeah because there's a lot of blank pages in this ledger but uh when you'll when you'll get to it um might be quicker just to go to the gallery screen yeah um, i'm uh i'm losing my scrolling touch now yeah no, you're good let's see that's funny actually if you go if you go back uh sorry kind of scroll up go back to the gallery no, not that oh yeah yeah. Go to morning report <laughs> and then just scroll down and until you start seeing uh right there you go. There we go. Okay. Any any one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh you'll see on these morning reports there's not there's not a single name. All there are are hash marks. Um so you have different basically you have a regiment and a company and different hash marks are number totals on mm. who, who was on you know present for duty, uh, sick, whatever, you know, on detail or whatever. Uh, and what's interesting is to match these numbers to the ordnance returns to see, yeah, they had like 30 rifles, but they had 60 dudes. So half of them didn't even have weapons, you know, like, yeah. uh, or, or yeah. vice versa, you know? So th it is interesting to match the amount of people who were present and duty, you know, present and accounted for, you know, ready for duty, Versus how many rifles, belts, and accoutrements they had. You know, you know, you can kind of compare and contrast those. Uh, but right now, like I said, we only have, you know, a few hundred of these documents. So I mean, yeah, not a whole lot. Um, so there's not a really good representative sample there. Our goal, and actually, this is what we ask our subscribers. In fact, why we're trying to get the, the our our word out there is because not only when you buy a subscription, not only are you, you know, getting access to all this, you're you're helping us. Uh, you know, go to these state archives and scan these things and then upload them for you, right? Um, that That's our whole goal is so to give you access to this. And so whether you, if, even if we don't have what you want, you know, we still ask you to become a member, subscribe, because that, that subscription allows us then to to go to that you know, national archives or the state archive or some random local, you know, history center, uh, scan it, upload it, tag it for you to where it's available for you. So that's that's our mission statement. And that's our goal. Uh, and obviously, every subscription helps that helps that mission statement. You hear that, everybody? Help these guys out. Yeah. These guys are helping us. Let's help them. <laughs> this is fantastic. And yeah. um, uh, again, so think, yeah, this same is awesome. thing. Muster rolls. I'm not even going to talk about. We only have like one upload of muster rolls. That's we're not even worried about that. Clothing ledgers. We have a few thousand clothing ledgers, uh, which is kind of interesting for the regiments we do have. You can actually see how many socks they were issued, how many blouses they were issued, how many times they blew through their drawers, uh, stuff like that. <laughs> wow. Um, so, and yeah. each page is for an entire person for, for most of the year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you have, I mean, you can see this guy from 1861 all the way to 62 or whatever. Um, Crazy. You, know, you can tell what he was issued. Uh, so it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. And for people who are like on genealogy, People who, you know, if you're lucky enough to have one of these ledgers uploaded and, and tagged and you can find your ancestor, you, you can see uh, how many pairs of underwear he blew through and <laughs> why is he blowing through underwear? I don't know. No. So, wow, you know, that's it, it gives that personal too, man. touch, that personal story. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, we know uh, there's one thing uh, I was curious. Uh, what's the civilian research? Yes. There? So, um one of the things that we actually have a, a couple people in our in our uh, employee base or our actually our our base of volunteers who who transcribe all these two of them are really into the authentic side of civilian and you know reenacting or interpretation or living history and uh they 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 really love again searching you know cdvs or images letters of the civilian experience of the war. Uh, on the letters and diaries, there's a lot of letters where the, the wives would write to their husbands, to where they're the authors, writing to their husbands, and you can you can feel the angst and the worry in their in their letters, and uh, you can see you know what they wore uh, both uh, in the you know on the street in the city, but also in studio portraits. And uh, so if you are a civilian reenactor or a civilian living historian or you're interested in this civilian, not the military, because everyone loves the military. They, they get all the attention. Uh, the civilian um, experience during the American War, the Civil War is you can click on the civilian tag, and then everything that shows up is only images, letters, diaries, or documents that have a civilian you know, tagged on there. Now, 
uh, we, we don't have time to get into it now, but you can actually filter by civilian women, civilian wow. men, children, <laughs> um, and slaves. You know, if you're interested on the African American experience, uh, you can filter by by that as well. Uh, so it's again focusing on the civilian side of things. Wow. And then the last one yeah. I'll talk about is if you scroll down to the very bottom is the National Archives microfilm roll search. So for for people who who are that, that dive into research and they start going to the archives and, and looking for microfilm or or they're they're ordering their own rolls at $100, actually $125 a pop now. Don't do that. Uh, let us know what roll you want. We'll order it, we'll upload it, and we'll give it to you. Right? You know, for for not even the cost of one roll, let alone hundreds of rolls. And so you can see here. Now, granted, they're listed as they're tagged in the National Archives. So you know, M1281 is the ordnance returns. M you know 900 is some Confederate records. Uh, M901 more Confederate records. Right? So so you can actually, if you know what roll you want and you know the call number of that microfilm roll. You can literally go to the National Archives, go down to the call number, search what you want, uh, and then and then find the microfilm that you want. Again, obviously these are more for the the seasoned researchers that that go. And you can do this right now. You can go to the National Archives, search the microfilm for a keyword like Confederate Quartermaster's records. It'll give you the call number and the roll number, and then you can you, instead of ordering it, you can come on here and, and look at it yourself. That's incredible again. Uh, great. This is fantastic. A lot of good <laughs> shortcuts right. to a lot of things. So this is, um, that's great, man. Wow. So yeah, I mean, that's yeah. It, it really, this whole thing progressed because it really is just my, my own frustration of like, I need a way of researching. I need a way of, of, uh, you know, doing my own thing and really being kind of a reenactor and living historian, then getting into the, I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say or admit that I, I'm an academic researcher. I'm not a professional historian at all. Uh, honestly, I am, you know, if you, if you guys listen to, you know, like the, the Battle of Gettysburg, Battle of Gettysburg podcasts uh, or Underground History or, I mean, all these all these other podcasts from legit historians, you know, they kind of distinguish being, a, really the definition of being a historian is interpreting the primary records, uh, not just researching. You know, anyone can research uh, but interpreting what that research indicates. And so I'm not going to say I'm a, I'm a historian by any stretch of the imagination, but I call myself, like I said at the beginning, a, a hobby historian to where, you know, I, I re I'm really curious on all these myths and things, or all, honestly, all these things that may be true that people say like, hey, did you know X, Y, Z? And I'm like, where did you get that? Like, I want to know what, what primary record started that, you know, myth or, or, you know, or, or story that, you know, is circulated around. I want to know where it came, come from. And, and the research arsenal or, you know, our, our mission statement is to provide primary records to the hobby historian. So people can access that, not just the, you know, professional historians. So that's, that's our yeah. goal. Hey, and we appreciate it, man. And yeah. Thank you for that tour of the website too, because uh... you bet. Uh, I learned a lot just now in the last few minutes oh, uh, of how to search yeah. that. So um, I'm fascinated. I can't now. Now I know what I'm going to be doing on a on a boring rainy day. Now I'm right. gonna, just typing in all kinds of keywords. But oh, yeah, exactly. But yeah, you're right. I, I'm an amateur too. Like you know, a lot of so many of us are. You know, uh, you know, uh, just because we're living historians doesn't mean we're actual historians too. Sometimes I think some guys exactly. run away with that sometimes. <laughs> like right. So no, like we're self proclaimed so experts right. sometimes, but. Well, but I, I love, yeah. In my own experience too, especially working with museums, not just as a reenactor or a living historian, not working with museums kind of behind the scenes or more with our research material, there's definitely, and you guys probably, and those of you who are listening probably have experienced this, there's definitely kind of a, uh, a love-hate relationship with reenactors, right? I mean, if, if you're a reenactor, you know all the drama in the reenacting world, and they bring that drama to historic sites, and they're hard. I mean, most reenactors are hard to deal with, anyways. They're kind of a pain. And so, I mean, we we have a, a reputation um, that uh, is not necessarily a good thing. And and when you look at you know coming on a, on a historic site and saying I'm a I'm a living historian. I've been doing this for thirty years. And and, and your thirty year oh, your thirty year uh, impression sucks. You know, it makes everyone else look bad, you know, so 
Uh-huh. We know that that's a good uh, segue to uh, another question I have is, you know, you're obviously heavily involved in the authentic campaigner side of the hobby. And uh, you put your you have many opportunities to put your research into action, you know, and, and you get every small detail as correct as possible. But, um, you know, you're in Wyoming and I know the hobby is a smaller presence out there, but you've hosted many events out in that part of the country uh, with a lot of these cavalry themed expeditions and uh, big events, um, uh, you know, also give an opportunity for all those reenactors with horses out in that area of the country. Mm -hmm. But, but, and you're taking advantage of the beautiful landscapes that the Midwest and uh, have to (laughs) offer. I know. (laughs) But can you speak about a little bit about some of those events that you've hosted? And I know I've seen pictures uh, some of the ones you guys have done in Dakota and, and yeah. whatnot, all the different territories, and it's like, um, it's amazing. No, really, even from from day one, when we started hosting um, these events, uh, I mean, even uh, ironically, our very first um, intro into reenacting was actually, even to this day, our, our biggest reenactment we've done, where we actually, we, we my, where I'm going is, we took an original order or original event in history and what's nice about, again, primary documents and like these orders, uh, there's an order from Fort Laramie that says, hey, Bob, with 13 other guys, take this one wagon uh, with these supplies and go to Fort Casper. And like that, that's perfect. There, there's an event right there that we have exactly how many people and we have what they had, exactly what accoutrements they had, how many horses and mules they had, uh, what was loaded in the wagon. And we can literally recreate that, and uh, that's what I enjoy. So our our very first event was a 150-mile ride across Wyoming from Fort Laramie to Fort Casper, recreating the the last ride of Casper Collins uh, before he died in battle, and uh, it was was epic. Uh, It was was good, and even people talk about it to this day, and that was, you know, 10 years ago or so. And then, like, you know, every event we do, our, our whole premise is when I'm doing my research, I find a letter and I'm like, well, that'd be a good premise, right? Uh, and because of the the library and the research arsenal that we have now, we know exactly what they had, you know, accoutrements, how many people, and we can literally recreate it almost to the man uh, on what they had out there. Uh, and so we, I, that, that's my whole, that's what I love. And in fact, what this is one thing I do enjoy about where the hobby is going, is you're starting to see more and more of, hey, we're we're recreating this specific event with this specific regiment. Uh, and because that your standards are, are that specific, you then can go to the, the national, or you can go to the research arsenal, or you can go to these documents. And I mean, to, to the saber or to the musket, to the cap box, you can have the exact same accoutrements uh, that they had and, and your impression is spot on, you know? And, and they really, that's why I'm really kind of digging this this rise in what I call specificity of regimental impressions because the documents are available. And I mean, now there's no excuse to not know that this regiment, they didn't have like they didn't have any canteens. In fact, there, there's some uh, records that we've come across that out of a, a, a 40 man company, 50 man company, there was like 10 canteens total. You try to and they were on campaign. like They were marching like try to do an event with 10 dudes with, can- with canteens, you know, like, yeah. That you would never yeah. do that. I mean, like, and how unique would that be, right? So, I mean, just, I love the maturing of our hobby of reenactors of making it really uniquely uh, spe- specific. And you don't you don't have to make stuff up. These ordinance returns and these morning reports, they tell a story that you would never guess. I mean, like, for instance, um, we did a, a ride called the Patrol in, in North Carolina, and and for and they didn't have any carbine slings or very few. They had very few carbine slings. And as a cavalry trooper, you want to just drop your gun and let it ride. You don't want to carry it the whole time. Okay. And I tell you what, that was a uh, an experience. I mean, that was the first time I, I carried a, a carbine for you know, however like 40 miles, 50 miles, I don't know, 60 miles. I don't, I can't, I can't remember how many miles we covered. Um, and holding it the whole time, like this is exhausting, you know, like. I just want a carving or a sling. I can drop it and just getting that experience is you, you would never do that because you would say, Oh, I'm a cavalry trooper. And they had carbine slings because they, they were issued that. Well, yeah. no, they weren't. So, 
Uh, that, that's what I love. Yeah, and you know, I, I, did, a thought just occurred to me that you have to travel a lot uh, <laughs> for the hobby. Like, if you're going yeah. to Carolina or Alabama or, like... Uh, you put a lot of miles in, uh, I'm sure, with all those horse trailers and your horses, too. Um, right. Our, our, that even that idea, takes our, a our lot. Our closest event, like our our home event, the closest one we do is four hours away. Um, and then it, it goes from there. Ten, yeah. Ten to 12 yeah. hours is common. And then anytime we go back east, well, back east is like Tennessee or, or further. Um, it's, you know, you're talking 24 to 36 hours. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of time for the horses to be cooped up to. It right? is. It is. Wow. Wow. But but it's amazing. Like I said, um, I was remarking earlier, the big uh, 160th Gettysburg was this year, and, and uh, <laughs> you were leading some of the cavalry contingents there, and, yeah. and uh, had some epic shots there. So it's worth it. You know, you go oh, yeah. cross country like that, and then you have those big epic moments. And I even see that painting uh, behind you. Is that Custer's charge? No, no, actually. Oh, uh, which one is that? No, that, that, I believe that's. Uh, you know what? So you call me on that. I can't remember. I want to say Cedar. It's, oh, it's maybe Cedar Creek. Sorry, it is. Sorry, it is Custer's charge. Late in the war, right before Appomattox. Oh, Cedar okay. Creek. Mate, no, no, it's uh, not. It. Five Forks. You know, it's a mystery. My ignorance. I right? think that's a Keith Rocco painting. It is, yeah. Yeah, sure. I like. Oh, he's great. He's good. Uh, see I, now, I, 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 I feel stupid right now. I, I keep, <laughs> Cedar Creek keeps going in my head. I know it's yeah. not that at all. But, no, I think um, you're right. I don't know why at first hunch I thought it was Gettysburg, Custer's Charge, but then I no, think well, that's, he has another that's painting a where it is one. East yeah. Cavalry Field with Gettys or with Custer. Yeah. This There's one, quite Custer's a few in the of background. Them. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's one of those last famous you. cavalry charges late yeah. in the war, right before Appomattox. And I, I'm sure you've witnessed your own uh, cavalry charges uh, at a few <laughs> events, and it's exhilarating, isn't it? It is. I, I would say uh, the 150th, yeah. for me, the 150th Gettysburg was probably the, the biggest. Uh, and, of course, I was new to reenacting still at the time, and so anytime you have your first, it's always memorable. But we had, if I remember right, I think total on both sides, we had like 500 horses in the field. And when we charged uh, on our East Cavalry field battle, uh, or even the second day, we did like a handover type event, and uh, I never felt that many horses in the field at one time. Like it's, and that, I mean that that that's maybe one regiment when uh, in the real life they had you know brigades charging. Well, yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it uh, I couldn't imagine. Couldn't imagine. Wow. So yeah, and that, that's why we go. You get back. a taste. You get a little taste. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I pretty mean, incredible. Like you said, back west, uh, a big event is like twenty dudes. Like that's big. And back east, you just you, we don't get the numbers we do back east, and so that's why once a year, at least once a year, we go back east, uh, even if it's a mainstream event, because you know just it's kind of nice, you know, far be or not, it's it's nice riding yeah. with 30, 40, 50 guys, yeah, um, yeah, you know, versus yeah, just really having cool. ten dudes with you. <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, we're starting to wind down. Unfortunately, we're running right. out of time, but. Um, I do have to ask you, uh, going back, um, so why why the 11th um, Ohio Cavalry? Uh, where did question. that start? Yes. Yeah. So uh, we, we can end with that, and the wire logo is, is what it is. Um, so <laughs> the 11th Ohio was a regiment that was, uh, they listed, actually, so originally they listed they enlisted as cavalry. They didn't know what unit they were going to be. They enlisted early on in 1862-ish, um, early 1862, they listed as cavalry, and they were thrown into the 6th Ohio Cavalry. And uh, without getting into it, there was a tizzy between some colonels uh, and some majors, and uh, the, the 6th Ohio was separated into companies A, B, C, and D was the first independent uh, battalion of the 6th Ohio. They were sent out west on the Oregon Trail to the middle of nowhere to fight Indians, uh, and then the rest of the 6th Ohio, reorganized as the 6th Ohio as we know it, uh, was, you know, fought back east. And, you know, later on, you know, Army of Potomac and you know, later, later on in, uh, in the Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Theater. And uh, the 6th Ohio that went out west, uh, they, for, you know, for a good chunk of time, they were the 6th Ohio, 1st Independent Battery or uh, Battalion. 
And they were sent out at Fort Laramie and present day Fort Casper all along the Oregon Trail to keep the telegraph open from, from the east over to the west so they can still talk to California and Oregon. And uh, their whole, they were sent out here. And then later in 1863, they were reorganized as the 11th o Ohio Cavalry. And that's why we call ourselves 11th Ohio, because Fort Casper, the hometown where I live in, uh, that is uh, where the 11th Ohio was stationed. In fact, Casper was a member of the 11th Ohio, uh, Company G, who died out here just outside of town. And uh, he, uh, they renamed him um, Fort Casper in honor of him. And he was the 11th Ohio uh, Cavalry Trooper. So that's why we named ourselves the 11th Ohio, because they actually were out here. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Got to yeah. represent the local history. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So, well, you know, um, uh, one more uh, question, too. Uh, uh, there's so many, right? There's so many <laughs> regiments we right. like. There's so many books we like. But, like, do you have one or two personal favorite books that are like your go-to for firsthand accounts or like the best source of like a, a, the best diary that you've come across or oh. the best book with research advice that you, that you kind of like. Well, maybe the, I'm hoping I'm not the only one, but it seems like every book I read, that's my new favorite book. You know, like, like this is yeah, great. That's you know? fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, been a, there's been a couple. I'm like, this is trash, like absolute trash. <laughs> Uh, the, the research was horrible on it, but well-researched books, like they're all my favorite when I'm reading them. They're my favorite, but I would say overall, um, like Western, like 11th Ohio wise, uh, there's a book called, uh, guarding the Overland trails and it's really well-researched primary sources and cited. And it really goes through how the army protected the Oregon trail during the civil war. Um, it, it really, do, really does a good job. Uh, Overall, just like, of course, those of you who know me, I'm, I'm interested in the cavalry. And so I'm really, I don't know, I really like like reference books. Not so much like, like, so Eric Wittenberg, you know, he's really good on the, on the cavalry side of things. You know, he, he, he wrote books on East Cavalry Field, Brandy Station. Uh, you know, he, he has you know, lots of books out there. Obviously, um, you know, a lot of, I really enjoy, honestly, sorry, answer your questions without rambling. My favorite genre of books is the 1890s era regimental histories, right? So far enough after the war that it's, it's done, but you still had the original witnesses writing them. Uh, I really love regimental histories because you, basically you can call it a primary account because it's, it's the dudes who, you know, who went through it. Now, granted, it's like 20 years later. Um, I really like those. Those are generally my favorite books. Because it's from witnesses, they put yeah. a lot of detail in there that you wouldn't find otherwise. Oh um, yeah, and, some more uh, than others, you know. Like exactly, you really have to uh, dig around because uh, there's some regimental histories that are like 100 pages, and there's some <laughs> that are like 900 pages. So, exactly, yeah. uh, it's great, but all of them are, are worth a look. So uh, I'd say overall, those are my favorite yeah. is regimental histories. Yeah. Yeah, and when are you going to upload all the regimental histories to Research Arsenal? <laughs> We're okay. working on it. All right. uh, so, no, actually, uh, right now, the, the hang-up is getting uh, permission from each person who scanned them. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I mean, well, here, and here's a deal, too. This is one thing we struggled with uh, on the legal side of things. Sorry, I mean, you can edit this out or, or cut yeah. it, whatever. But, or you could condense whatever you Or I'll condense it. <laughs> is legally, especially on the photos and some of the publications, there's, I mean, we're on the photos, we're well past copyright claims. And so, I mean, in talking to my lawyer, when we first um, started this whole thing, legally, I could just take anything off the internet and post it. Um, now, we don't, we don't, because it's just, it's, it's just not right. You don't do that. Uh, but basically we can, um, as far as I understand in looking at the, the, the rules themselves, the original photos were copywritten and, and you can't take photos of photos because, you know, the copyright stays with the photo and because it's past the, the time frame, we can literally just take a lot of the stuff and put it on there. Even if the owner of the photo doesn't like it. Now, again, we don't do that. Every photo we have on there, we have permission, uh, to be uploaded, but, uh, the, the regimental histories are kind of in that realm. Um, uh, some of them are not all of them, but some of them are, and uh, we could just upload them and you know make them keyword searchable, which is what we're doing. 
But right now, uh, Google and, and really a lot of uh, state universities are the ones mm -hmm. who are digitizing these. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we're painstakingly contacting them and asking permission to upload them. Uh, awesome. A lot of people don't quite understand our mission statement, and they're like, no, you're making money off of it. And I'm like, trust me, we're not. Like, I'm never going to recoup <laughs> what I've invested in this. So, like, yeah, we're charging for it. Yeah. But, like, I'm, we're not I making know. money from it. But I know. So we're, we're, getting, we're getting headway. But, yeah, 100%, we are. Our yeah. goal is all the uh, great. ORs and regimental histories to be on there. To that be would be amazing. Virtual. Yeah, like a one-stop shop yeah. for, for so much. Well, you know, as we uh, are concluding now, uh, you know, do you have – any parting thoughts then for, for those of us who are in the research world and, and you know, a summary of your goals and providing all this and making all this accessible? Really, the biggest thing, especially for, for say, new reenactors, new living historians, is just be open-minded uh, and don't take any uh, abrasive criticism bad. Like, just, you know, do, do the hobby because you enjoy the hobby, you know? Um, and, and enjoy research. Honestly, I, I, I just get lost in research and loving because you, you discover things. And honestly, I'll say this. I've discovered things on documents that have never been seen. I mean, they've been in these basements for a hundred years. No one's ever seen them. Uh, and I'm discovering things that no one, you, you find it's fun discovering things yourself. Um, so it's really yeah. fun. I challenge you guys to do research, but obviously as, as a shameless plug for the, for the research arsenal, uh, I mean, our mission statement is is to to basically be the the one stop shop for civil war research um, from you know, official records to original histories to documents that are in people's basements. Uh, and that's really that's our, our mission statement is is, you know, Ancestry Fold 3, even the National Archives, even the state archives, which, you know, we're still working with them. They they're working on the whole digitization thing. Uh, but there are so many collections on eBay, on you know, in homes, in basements, in honestly random city historical societies that they don't even know what they have. And um, you know, that's you know, we're 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 working with these local places to show them, hey, don't don't tear them apart. I mean, they're throwing them away. We just uh, just last year we ran across a local historical society that's throwing these regimental records away. And we're like, no, and they're like, oh, no one's going to want these. They're, they're not like, wow, you know, yeah. genealogy things. And they're like, no, 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 I'll, I'll take them. Like, I'll take them. Um, and just, I mean, even today, people are doing this. And so really, I'm, I'm, I just challenge your listeners, please support us. Uh, again, if you think it's a money making thing, I, I will guarantee you I have we have spent more money than I have ever imagined. I'll, I'll just say this. We could buy multiple houses for uh, <laughs> what we've put yeah. into this. And I'm never going to get it back. Right? I get that. Yeah. I understand that. All we're asking is for support to move forward, uh, to be able to hire transcribers, people in these states that we can you know, hire to, to transcribe. Uh, again, full three and ancestry, they're focusing on, on the, the personal, um, the names. Our goal is to focus on the material culture, the, you know, the, the, yeah, the material culture and the stories. Uh, that that you know they're that they're not focusing on to be a complementary source to to them, and uh, we we need people to to transcribe. We need people to to do that. We need money to pay them. Um, so uh, that's what your subscription really does. Is it you know it provides you access, but more importantly, it provides us the ability to continue digitizing and preserving these documents for for the next generation, so then they can research and they can discover things that have never been discovered before. Awesome. And I, I appreciate that you guys have different packages there on, on the screen uh, for right. those of you interested in all. There's a free plan, uh, yeah. you know, but then there's there's also there's different plans depending on if you're a student or or what state you're in as far as how deep you want to be involved in this, how deep you want to exactly. be committed. So someone like me, I probably want that full year. Right. And, <laughs> right. you know, or like I want the, the best deal there. And, right. you know, but. Or like, you know, and I think we've you've even encouraged before, like, yeah, you could do like a, a short term subscription and do a juggernaut amount of research in a short yeah. time and boom, whatever suits your fancy, you know. Exactly. And so um, that's awesome. And so, yeah, please go to researcharsenal.com. Check out their uh, subscriptions. There's a lot there. And again, um, so much to check out there. So really um, looking forward to that. But. 
Stephen, thank you so much. This has yeah. been a, a great uh, deep dive into the site and the yeah, origins yeah. and ideas behind it and and uh, and where you came from and where the ideas came from. So again, I really want to thank you for uh, taking the time to be with me tonight. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, for your listeners too, I appreciate uh, the time and opportunity to show our, our, our passion for history. Awesome. Awesome. And again, thank you all for listening. And uh, I, I can't wait to see the journey that this site takes and, and how it expands. And, and maybe uh, next season, we'll have an update episode of, of all Sounds the new good. content you might have on there. <laughs> I'll, I'll come on but, uh, and talk with you anytime. I can talk about history awesome. forever. So Awesome. I know, especially in more Calvary stuff, too. I could talk oh, about course. that a lot, too. Awesome. Yeah. So again, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, you have a good evening. And again, Thank you all for listening. Um, I hope you enjoy this episode. Um, please uh, share this with your friends uh, who are interested in this site. You know, this is a good preview on deep diving into the uh, research arsenal. And so, and stay tuned for more episodes this season. So, but until then, take care and good night, everybody.